Faith is a substance of things hoped, the evidence of things not seen. Many people have a faith that is limited to the physical. But what if we told you that your faith has the power to change your life? Starting now, the awakening of faith. Brought to you by the Universal Church. Good morning, everyone. Today, Tuesday, April 23, we start the awakening of faith. Faith is a power given by God to transform any situation. Perhaps you are facing many problems in your health. Cancer, tumor, infection, pain, migraine, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, depression, insomnia. But you cannot accept these problems in your health. With faith, if with your faith in the Word of God, you can overcome all problems in your health. The Word of God is the instruction to overcome all sickness, all pain, all suffering in your life. That's why today, in our Universal Church, we have the special meeting to give you the instruction from God to overcome all sickness in your health. But now let's listen a song of faith and soon we'll come back.
By the power of God, you can cast out, you can remove this pain in your body, this pain in your soul. Yes, you can remove this problem in your health, but you need to use your faith. Here in the book of Psalm, chapter 30, verse 2, David say, O oh Lord my God, I cry out to you and you healed me. And you healed me. My dear, my friend, do you believe God is your Lord? Do you believe? Nothing possible to Him. If you put your trust in His Word, you will see the difference, the healing in your body. That's why the first step to receive the healing from God in your body is you cannot accept this situation. You cannot accept this problem, this depression, this sadness inside you. That's why today come, we will cry out to God and God will answer you. God will give you this power of faith to change this situation. Do you believe? Come, let's listen right now a powerful testimony about faith and soon we'll come back to our prayer, our prayer. God wants answer you, but you need to do your part. David say, Oh Lord my God, I cry out to you and you healed me. Psalm chapter 30 verse 2. Urine in my heart. 30 38 kilograms. The doctor told my family to say goodbye to me.
All of this started with an accident when I crashed my motorbike. I got up from the accident and walked home, thinking it had been a simple bump. I was badly hit in my private parts. About two months later, I went to the bathroom one day and despite a lot of effort, I could not urinate. I then began to lose blood, pure blood. I started to run a fever. My kidneys were damaged. I couldn't urinate properly. And every time I drank water, I found it difficult to pass urine. My brother and I went to a medical center near home. When we got there, the doctor examined me and then asked for a blood test. She caught me by surprise when she said that I needed to be hospitalized immediately. I was casually dressed in flip-flops, thinking that I would only undergo a routine examination, but she had already booked a bed for me. After the exam result, she told me that I had severe anemia due to the blood loss. She was certain that my urine and my whole body were infected. When I arrived at the emergency room, the nurse came and put a probe in me. After that, the urine started to come out all rotten and black. It was so bad that the doctor called my sister and said that they had already done what they could do for me. Your brother may only have eight days to live. He will not make it past this week. The reason for that was that my medical exam showed that I had water in my heart. Urine had leaked into my lungs and now there was water and urine there. So all my internal organs were already infected. At that point, I was no longer eating, so I started to lose weight. I became that way we can see in this picture. After four weeks, I was weighing 38 kilograms. My kidneys were no longer working. I had to undergo hemodialysis. I was then transferred to the ICU, as the doctor said that he had done all he could do for me. They had done all that could be done for me. They told my sister to inform my family that I would not make it out alive. I could not eat through my mouth. There is another picture which shows me with a probe. I was already being fed through the nose. I already knew about faith because I had been in the church for 21 years. I had been healed in the church in the past. Soon after my healing in a special meeting, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. For this reason, I could not accept that situation. Having the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, I didn't accept what I was going through. A revolt arose inside me. And through this revolt, I started to not see myself as a sick person. I no longer saw myself as sick. I then decided to take a step of faith through my revolt. This happened exactly at the time of the campaign. God showed me what I had to do I took the mobile phone that you can see by my side when I was already in that situation, using the probe. I was revolted. And with that mobile phone, I called someone and asked for a favor. I asked my friend for a favor. I had something that I was very attached to, really attached to. However, I thought, what is the point of having it? If I died, it would be left here anyway. Even if I was transferred to a better hospital and give it to a doctor, it wouldn't solve my problem. It wouldn't resolve it. So I appealed to my faith in God. I then asked my friend to present that sacrifice in my name on the altar because I was in no condition to go there. I agreed to do that favor for him. However, I had to have it on record saying that he was doing this by his free will. It was his faith, but to do that, I had to have it documented. When he asked me to do that, I have the audio recorded here. When he asked me, I will play this so you can hear it. His voice was weak. I couldn't understand properly. I had to ask him to repeat it several times. Hi, Jefferson. Hi, Sandro. Jefferson, pay attention so that it all goes right. I have enclosed the evidence of my challenge in the envelope. Place it on the altar tomorrow. It has to be tomorrow, brother. There can be no delay. I will do it tomorrow, no problem. Explain that it is the sacrifice of someone in hospital. It has to be there, on the altar. 
go up there in the way that I have explained. That's right, no worries. When I saw the faith of this man, I said, I must do the best I can for him. I have to give my best for him, because I have to do this like I was doing it for me. He went to the altar on my behalf. He became my legs and my arms. I put Sandro's life on that altar. As he went up the altar, I was there on the hospital bed. I came down with the certainty that everything would change. The doctor had told me that I had eight days to live, but I had already been in hospital for 45 days. The probe had been removed and the exam showed that everything was improving. My lungs were working at 100% again. Previously, when I tried to speak, I would feel very tired. As you could hear in the audio to my friend, it showed how tired I was while speaking to him. However, at this time, I could see the power of God strong in my life. I was surprised by Sandro's recovery. It was very quick. Every time I visited him, I saw him changing more and more, his situation improving, even his voice, his countenance, everything changed. I said, it is the action of God in his life. It was a supernatural thing that happened to me. Even the doctor told me that she did not know what was happening. I have kept all the exams. She told me, you will be discharged this week. I was then discharged from hospital. For someone who was like that, 38 kilograms, lying on that bed, I show this photo that I kept to people, and they don't believe that it's me. I was even placed on a diet by the doctor because I went over my normal weight. Six months after I was discharged, I had to return to hospital to have some routine exams done. The same doctor who had given me eight days to live looked at me, then asked me to get on the scales to get weighed. He looked at me, hugged me, and he was very happy to see me so well. I told him, I came walking up the ramp and I'm not tired. That ramp at the hospital was very high and here I am. At the end of the day, the only one who answers everything for our lives, who resolves everything in our lives is God. It is the altar. The altar resolves. Today, the restaurant I have does not mean anything to me. Not even what I placed on the altar. God has given me more than I placed on the altar for him. Sandro is a friend, a brother that faith brought to me. I could not disappoint him or God, let alone his faith, because I have never seen a faith like this. If it hadn't been for the Holy Spirit, I would have given up. I would have given up. But I thank God. Thank God for his spirit inside me. Every day he surprises me more. In life, there are problems that just hit you with a blow. Everything crumbles away and the heartache never seems to disappear. Everything keeps going wrong. You are in despair. What do you do when your hope isn't enough? When your single prayer seems to return unanswered and the persistent problem is still there? Partner with God and make a chain of prayer. The Chain of Prayer is a weekly series of uninterrupted prayer and action to tackle the most stubborn of problems. Make the Chain of Prayer and turn things around once and for all. Don't give up. Make a Chain of Prayer. It works.
Let's pray right now. Close your eyes. My Father, we enter in your holy presence in this moment because, my Father, we know you are powerful to change every situation, my Lord. That's why right now put your holy oil in this pain, my Father, in their pain, in their soul, to remove, my Lord, all suffering, all darkness, all depression. Yes, my Lord, with you we can overcome, yes, all problems. That's why, my Father, we ask you right now your power. We ask you right now your answer. We need you, my Father. In the name of Jesus, my Father, this person, believe you, believe in your word. That's why embrace them right now. Heal them right now, my Father. You can touch, my Father, in this pain, in this soul, in this body. And my Lord, remove yes, this suffering in their body right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus, yes, we command you, I command you, all evil force, all darkness, sickness, in this body, in Jesus' name, get out right now. Yes, my dear, my friend, if you believe, receive right now the healing from God. Be free right now. Be healed right now. Receive strength from God. Yes, to overcome. Yes, all problems in your life. Yes, my Lord, you can enter. Yes, in this person, in this people. And give them your peace. Receive peace. Receive strength, receive joy. Right now, start a new beginning in your life. We pray for you, we bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. If you believe, you can say Amen. Amen? I believe, my dear, my friend. God wants to bless you more. That's why come today in our church. Uh, we have a meeting 10 a.m. We have a meeting at 4 p.m. and special 6.30 p.m. Here in Nambua, uh, our church in Nambua above Wetspec Bank. Okay, I'm sure. God wait for you here to give you more. May God bless you. See you. What's the voice of fear? The voice of faith takes away all bad thoughts. The voice of faith brings us certain Quite the voice of doubt. The voice of faith is the certain never change. The voice of faith brings a certain sweet calm, confidence within my soul that the will be. 
Tati.